lifting the lid on the world of political betting. We're going to read into this piece from the BBC, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Elite here with an article from the BBC with the headline of lifting the lid on the world of political betting. An investigation into Rishi Sunak's parliamentary aide Craig Williams placed a £100 flutter on the general election has thrown a spotlight in the world of political betting. Guys, while you're here, make sure you hit the like button and share across social, me social media so others are notified of this video. So just to highlight, Craig Williams... Um, is of course uh, raised uh, suspicions about this election and about political betting and it's kind of highlighted it here and I'm actually glad that we're talking a little bit about this but I just want to talk about a bit quick just briefly about Craig Williams here he's a conservative MP and uh, this and uh, obviously had some inside scoop on what the possibility of when the general election may be called and although it was a, a hundred pound bet the fact that it's the, it's the time of when he uh, placed the bet, which was just a few days before the general election, raised suspicions about this. And <clears throat> considering how clear and how how obvious it looks that Labour are going to win, um, there are lots and lots of questions about the political betting world and how um, certain things can be rigged in the in the favour of of certain politicians so they can win a stack full of cash. Like, for example, the uh, 2008 financial crash, which some people made themselves incredibly wealthy off the top of, i.e. our current Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. And I think uh, political betting, obviously, there needs to be, obviously, as much, there needs to be plenty of care and enable them to make sure that people are not taking advantage and people aren't really... And we know that there is, uh, there is certain people who are rigging it or getting their friends or someone else yet to make make uh, bets of some sorts where they think where they've got a bit, uh, where they know the outcome <coughs> the potential rigging back team and i do think this is something that we should look into more um perhaps maybe even something that if a labor government does come to power which looks likely to do that'd be something we should look at uh, into a lot more so uh, let me let's read a bit more into this, guys. Just to kind of get a bit more of understanding for those about the political betting aspect. So gambling on the sporting events is now a very big business in the UK. Millions will be waging the summer on the Euros and the Paris Olympics, and most of it online rather than the traditional way of entering a bookmakers. But betting has long been a part of the political world too. Now, from the outside, betting on obscure by-election or the party's leadership contest may seem strange. But for some political obsessives, it combines the unpredictability and excitement of sport with the intrigue of a dramatic narrative. One of the proudest moments of my, of my life of political betting guru Mike uh, Simpson, who correctly predicted the result of the 2021 Cheshire and Amazon by-election. He said, I got the Lib Dems to win at 20 to 1 and I got it right, he said. Mr. Smithston, who runs the politicalbetting.com website after years as a BBC British school journalist, said, I love politics and there's nothing like predicting winners and losers. <coughs> people like to look at things and think they know the answer. When you go for that drink in the pub, people always end up saying, I think it's going to go this way or that. Political betting is often used by betting companies as a gateway to entice new punters to more lucrative for the firm's betting platforms. Most bookies get into political betting because they like signing up new customers who will then be attracted to other areas, said Mr. Spitherson. But some remarkable amounts of money have been wagered over the years. In 2017, an anonymous student placed a series of wagers amounting to £10,000 on Jeremy Corbyn winning the, the Labour general election. They lost their money. Mr. Smith estimates between 10 million and 20 million will be placed a bet on the election this year. Oof. 20 million. Online betting exchange Betfair suggested that, that more than 8 million has been staked on the outcome of the general election. But these figures do not include bets with larger betting firms. Mm. Oh, by the way, if you hear a cat in the background, don't worry about it. He, he's fine. Uh, this makes a minuscule slice of the 15.1 billion UK gambling market. 
But according to William Kajder's head of political uh, contest at Star Sports, political betting has been growing steadily over the last two years. It has been helped by the fact that we have particularly violated events. The yes and no Brexit referendum uh, was perfect for betting. Yeah, that was, uh, I'm sure some people made off, made out pretty well on that one, considering how difficult it was to call. And people like to bet on very tight events. Over the years, the type of political bets have diversified. Traditional bets on election outcomes remain popular, but novelty bets such as predicting specific political events or decisions are gaining traction. Elections by themselves are perfect betting events. There are lots of options across 650 constituents, betting on each one or overall uh, victory, said Mr. Uh, Kenji. Betting on politics has has surprisingly long history in the UK. Charles James Fox, the 18th century Whig Prime Minister, was known to bet frequently and largely and traditionally on the social and political occurrences of the time, according to his biographer. During the Victorian era, what Edwidon periods the gambling law became stricter impacting political betting but in 1963 Labrooks began opening accepting bets on political events and by the following year's general election William Hill had joined in but the people who worked at Westminster like those who work at horse rating stables or football clubs need to be careful using confidential information to gain an advantage could amount to cheating under the gambling act which is a criminal offence yeah and the thing is is that <clears throat> if you know if you if you're if you're someone like here's the thing like we don't know well, obviously 100% for sure about out, certain outcomes of in the political spectrum but if you're somebody who's paying a lot of attention to not just polling but like the ease on the ground of what people are saying if you if you really are paying attention you could really make a you could potentially really get a lot of numbers right and if you, if you if you if you if you, if you I have a great deal of understanding of knowing where where it is. You can really make a make a quite a quite money, quite a fair bit of money. But obviously, there is that possibility of, which is why it's so careful with politicians. Obviously, we're very skeptical about anybody who's actually within the political sphere making betting because of how they could potentially know the art the outcomes before anybody else. <coughs> but yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure the majority of people have put their money on a Labour majority. I think some people have probably betted on a hung parliament as well. Um, I do think that, I do think, despite everything, there is that there is still an outside possibility of it being a hung parliament, even though it's unlikely. I do think that can be the case. I don't think I think I don't think yeah, many people have put put their money uh, on on the Conservatives. If I'm honest, maybe even one or two people have put, crazily put their money on Reform as well. Because why not? Um, yeah, so the Gambling Commission is is making inquiries into Craig Williams, the Conservative Party election candidate and former aide to Rishi Sunak, and, and Mick claims that he placed a £100 bet on the date of the election days before the PM announced it. Mr Williams has apologised and said he made a huge error in judgement, but has not confirmed the details of his bet. Mr Sunak described his actions as very disappointing, and that the opposition parties are calling for him to be suspended as a candidate or face a cabinet of office investigation. It is understood that the watchdog rock to O licensed bookmakers this week requested information on anyone who stood to gain by more than £199 by betting on the July election in the UK. Westminster scandalers will be watching as a result of this one with particular interest. Yeah, so political gambling obviously is going to be uh, interesting to say the least. And it is also extremely dangerous because obviously... We in this country we do have a gambling problem. Let's let's have us let's be serious. We do have a gambling problem. We have a problem in in football in other sports. There are people obviously who thrive off it. Some people even make a can make a living off it. But it can also destroy lives, and it can also become an addiction to certain people who end up losing all their money uh, uh, by gambling as well. So it's really important that we we take as much. Um, is that there, there? There are limits and restrictions on it. I still think that they have too much of a say and they have too much influence in, in, within the world of football, in particular, um, especially the, the 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 amount of promotion on betting around football, for example. More of that needs to be reduced, in my opinion. I just think they have way, way too much influence uh, within football uh, in that in that regard because it is our biggest sport, which is where the the majority of of them can make make the most money. But I do think, obviously, in terms of politics, um, um, <clears throat> do I think it's wrong? Is do I think it's bad that we have 
betting it in politics. I don't think it's bad, but do I think yeah there should be maybe maybe they should look in looking in look into it at some point in the future I Labour government. Maybe it should be worth looking into. Um I'm not a, a, a I'm not a gambling person myself. The only thing I've I've been recent the only thing I do once a year is probably bet on is maybe the Grand National and that's about it. I don't really bet on anything else guys to be honest. But some of you may be watching who are gambling addicts or some have had their lives destroyed by gambling see this as quite dangerous and the potential that it could have. Especially when everybody thinks yeah that the the it is so clear what the outcome of this election is going to be. That people are just putting their house on Labour when it is it's entirely possible that it could be a hung parliament. Remember, there's still several weeks to go at the time of this recording. So there's there's a lot that can change. I don't expect it. We don't expect to come back from the Conservatives. But there's no guarantee what the amount of seats that Labour are going to end up with, more or less. It really does depend on how other parties, uh, how they are doing on their campaigns and in their areas as well, from the Lib Dems to the Greens and even SNPs and SNPs and Ply Cymru in Wales and Scotland, respectively, there. So as well as reform, of course, in England and how their impact and their and numbers will take place as well. So there's lots still to play for, that is for sure. But what do you guys think about political betting? What do you guys make of it? Have you betted in, in politics in yourself? Or are you someone that bets in the football in football as, as well? <clears throat> Maybe you're someone who doesn't bet at all and you don't believe in gambling. Maybe some of you have suffered as a result of it. Let me know your thoughts, what you think about political betting and more in the comment section down below. If you found this video interesting, please hit the like button. We greatly appreciate it. Share it across social media so others are notified of this video. And subscribe because it really does help support the channel. And if you want to go one step further, financially support me and the work that I do here, you can do so by becoming a YouTube member for as little as 99p. Or join me on Rumble or Patreon for exclusive content on those platforms. So thank you all so much for watching. Hope to catch you all very, very soon.